Aerial refueling can go wrong, and at times it can be deadly. Hoses breaking off, fuel spilling, and mid-flight collisions are just some of the things that make aerial refueling dangerous. And as we dig deeper into what happened with each mishap, you may finally understand why aircraft can safely refuel with their engines running and in the presence of fuel leaks, while car engines need to be shut off in gas stations. But what happened when a helicopter ran out of fuel in the middle of a Category 1 hurricane is not what you think. Now that was close if you ask me, but what actually went wrong? Any two large airplanes flying close by might find themselves in a dangerous situation. This is due to aerodynamic forces experienced when in proximity. In this case, the receiver aircraft was an E3 sentry. As contact was made, the E3 kept moving closer, and when the retract limits on the boom was reached, it auto-disconnected. But the E3 was too close and too forward, so its bow wave pushed the tail of the tanker up. A bow wave is a shock wave that forms in front and around the aircraft, similar to a ship's bow wave, but for aircraft. As the tail of the tanker pushed up, the autopilot trim couldn't keep up and disengaged, causing the tanker to descend downward toward the E3. Luckily, the E3 sentry quickly dived down, saving both aircraft. The CH-53 Sea Stallion is about to experience what it's like to become a Muslim or Jewish man. Mazel tov. I'm not a psychologist, but that's gonna be one self-conscious stallion. See, the amount of turbulence behind a tanker aircraft is substantial, so it's very easy to overcorrect. In this case, the helicopter pilot actually got lucky, because if the pilot hadn't pulled up that hard, the drogue may have been caught in the rotor blades, which could have been fatal. But what happened to the helicopter, since it couldn't refuel anymore? Even if a helicopter runs out of fuel, it should still be able to land using auto-rotation. As a helicopter descends with its engines off, the rotors continue spinning, simply by the upward flow of air through the rotor blades. Of course, if you lose the ability to refuel over enemy territory, or in the middle of a hurricane, as you'll see, things get a bit more complicated. That stallion may never boink again, but you can when you play Kingdom Maker, the sponsor of today's video. About that boink, in this game not only do you play a noble with a variety of traits, but you get to interact, wink wink boink, other nobles to make babies. I already have three. These babies will actually inherit your traits. For example, if you have an explorer child, they have speed bonuses for research and crafting. Kingdom Maker is free to play on iOS and Android and combines RTS, RPG and simulation gameplay to create a deeply immersive multiplayer world where you can play your own way. But the game doesn't always take itself too seriously and has tons of fun and classic medieval fantasy tropes. Moving buildings around is as simple as drag and dropping them. And by the way, any timer under 5 minutes is free in this game, so you only need to use speed ups to get it down to 5 minutes. As you level up, you get to move your city to different areas, which changes your city's scenery and neighborhood dynamics. Your armies are extremely customizable, so when PvP fights are announced in the global chat, you can help whoever you wish by joining the battle or simply sit back and spectate. So click the link in the description to download and enjoy Kingdom Maker, the game with only one rule, yours. If you've never been whiplashed by the hose, you're gonna wanna watch this one. After contact, the hose went slack, which resulted in a whiplash. It's critical for the hose to stay fully extended at all times, otherwise resonance can occur, which will break off the drogue. Those other pilots are probably not too happy either. Let's hear the original audio. Tony, I told them to take it easy on the hose. When the hose breaks off, it can be sucked into the engine, but this F-14 was lucky. In a similar incident on board aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln, an F-35C was damaged during an aerial refueling exercise when receiving fuel from an F-A-18. The aerial refueling basket was ingested into the F-35's intake. Both aircraft were able to land safely, however, the damage to the F-35 was more than $2 million and was reported as a Class A mishap. But if you think $2 million is an expensive trip to the gas station, this next refueling incident cost the US Air Force more than $150 million. On September 29, 2020, a KC-130J and an F-35 were conducting aerial refueling using the probe and drogue method. But then, the unthinkable happened. The two aircraft collided mid-air. 
As the pilots later described, the whole thing lasted about a second. That's what she said, the pilot. It was so violent that the headsets flew off their heads. The F-35 pilot immediately ejected and safely descended as he watched his aircraft plummet into the ground, resulting in a giant fireball. Meanwhile, inside the K-130's cockpit, the pilots came to a shocking realization. They still had control of the airplane. Pilots declared an emergency to the air traffic controllers, stating that their aircraft had collided with the F-35, they'd lost two engines, and they might even be on fire. For the next 12 minutes, the captain, along with the co-pilot, conducted an emergency descent and barely landed on a field in a remote area in California. The collision had destroyed both of the KC-130's starboard engines, punched a hole in the plane, but left the primary flight control surfaces operational, which allowed the pilots to safely land. Additionally, the tanker was leaking fuel from the pods, but most of it, about 7,200 gallons, remained in the tanker during landing, because due to the time constraints and the possibility of fire, there was no opportunity to dump the fuel. Originally, the pilots intended to land in Jacqueline Cochran Regional Airport in Thermal, California. But 10 minutes after the collision, the aircraft made an uncontrolled right turn. As a result, the pilots decided to land in one of the cauliflower fields. According to the pilots, it wasn't like in the movies. It was relatively smooth and they came to a stop pretty quickly. All eight crew members made it out alive without any serious injuries. Both pilots later earned the Distinguished Flying Cross, the U.S. military's second highest medal of valor that an aviator can get. This time, the crew were lucky, as you can see pieces of the propellers missing. A few years prior to this incident, 16 personnel lost their lives when a corroded propeller blade came off mid-flight. But have you ever wondered why it's unsafe to refuel your car while the engine is running, yet aircraft are routinely refueled mid-flight? Not to mention fuel leaks and static electricity sparks that are frequently produced on initial contact of the tanker and the receiver aircraft. When refueling modern cars, turning the engine off is more of a precaution in order to minimize distractions. Just like how you shouldn't be on your cell phone while refueling, so you don't end up doing this. With that said, sometimes running a car while fueling can result in a fire, be it a hot catalytic converter or a side exhaust on older cars. As a rule of thumb, you want to turn off the engine, stay away from your cell phone and avoid smoking. And don't go in and out of the car because it could build up static electricity on your body and clothing and a spark can turn into a flame. You see, gasoline has a flash point of minus 50 degree Fahrenheit while kerosene has a flash point of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This fact alone makes kerosene much safer compared to gasoline. During aerial refueling, both aircraft are moving at high speeds, which means any spilled fuel dissipates quickly. Fuel is more than a dozen feet away from the heat of the engines, and biggest of all, up high, it gets cold. Roughly for each thousand meters, the temperature drops about five degrees Celsius. Meaning that, at an altitude of 5,000 meters, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius lower than it is on the ground. This means that during aerial refueling, kerosene is way below its flash point. So sparks like this, between the basket and the nozzle, won't ignite anything, even though sparks could generate as much as 10,000 volts. But that said, sparks could pose a serious threat to the avionics on board the aircraft. For this reason, all aircraft that engage in aerial refueling have an electronic pulse protection system installed to handle those static charges. The day before Halloween in 1991, an HH-60G Pavehawk helicopter with the call sign Jolly 110 headed out into a hurricane that became known as the Perfect Storm. And yes, there's a movie with the same name starring George Clooney. The mission of the five-man crew was to rescue a sailing vessel 250 miles offshore. A weather buoy offshore of Halifax, Nova Scotia detected a 100-foot wave, the largest ever recorded wave in that part of the Atlantic. As a result of severe weather, Jolly 110 was unable to finish the rescue mission and turned around. Jolly had already refueled three times from an HC-130 Hercules, but had to do one more refueling to make it back to the mainland. 
the pilot attempted refueling more than 30 times, but due to extreme turbulence and lack of visibility, both drogues had been damaged. Unable to refuel, and with only 20 minutes left, the pilot decided to ditch the helicopter in the middle of the perfect storm, while the engines were still running. As four of the crew members jumped overboard, the Pavehawk was hit by a wave and the chopper ended up in the water. The pilot was 15 feet underwater, but he was able to escape the sinking helicopter. At this point, the crew were stranded 90 miles offshore in 100 knot winds and 80 foot waves. Five hours later, U.S. Coast Guard cutter Temeroa reached the crash site. Four airmen were rescued, but pararescue jumper Arden Rick Smith was sadly never found.